Fabs. I am back. I have curly hair this time because I don't have the motor skills to do my hair. My name is Adeli, and like I've said before, I was diagnosed with neuromyelitis optica. If you haven't seen that video yet, scroll down to my first video and check that out. But before you do so, make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fab Animal. So fall is upon us here in New England and the days are already getting gray and gloomy and it sucks. But what are we gonna do that's mother nature? Today, I'm really making this video out of my heart. I didn't really plan anything for this video, just for the simple um, being as that I haven't been feeling too well, a little under the weather. But I was really wanted to talk about something that I think we all go through when we get diagnosed with something or let it be, you know, something like a cancer or autoimmune disease. I mean, not that that compares by any way. When we get diagnosed with something like an autoimmune disease or something that just changes your life forever. And the different stages that we go through uh, to accept that or to accept those changes that we're about to go through that we have no clue what we're gonna be going through. For example, when you first get diagnosed, for um, in my example, with autoimmune disease, it was an initial state of shock. You were shocked because how did this happen and why me? You go through the stage of how did it happen? Why did it happen? Why me did it happen? I mean, I still go through those stages now and I'm okay with having this um, autoimmune disease on my shoulder, but it was a very confusing stage because it was kind of like, you're going through everything that you know and looking up what the diagnosis is and you're trying to find out how can I get better from this? Acting like this is just a cold that you can just take some, you know, medicine for over the counter and you'll be fine in a few days. Like, no, this is not that. And I didn't realize it wasn't that simple, you know, as, as time kept progressing. And that really hurt me in the sense that I was, I was shattered inside. I was, I was battling something inside that I didn't even know how to explain. When you hear those initial words of you have, in my example, NMO, neuromyelitis optica, this is, there's no cure for this, there, it is treatable, you know, but we don't really know what this is. And this is kind of like an up and coming disease that we just found out a few years ago. And it's still in the diaper stages of its life. What? That initial first stage of being in shock, confused, and kind of indifferent as to what's going on is really a hard stage. And you can feel alone, and trust me, I felt alone, and I have a beautiful family who supported me all the way through, and I still felt alone. Because you feel as though like nobody can understand you, that you, you feel like almost like they think that you're making the symptoms up when you're really not. Um, for example, uh, this past week, I've been having motor skills issues. Like I can't write this week. I can't do my hair correctly. I can't even put an eyeliner on my eye. Like, but it's because of the symptoms that I'm having because of my NMO. So I just roll along with the punches. I can't do my hair. I'm gonna leave it nice and curly because what are we gonna do, right? which I love curly hair by the way. And after the initial reaction of the shock that you get when you first receive a diagnosis, then it goes to like, I wanna say stage two, where you're okay, I have this, now what? So it's not like really like you're accepting of it, but you realize that there's a problem there and that there's need to be some fixing, but you just, it's out of your hands. And for a person like me, who likes to control a lot of situations under my, you know what? this was hard for me because like for the first time in a very long time i could not control what was happening to my body and that internally was affecting me in all types of way i'm pretty sure that there are other people out there who feel the same way who can't control their environment and can't control their bodies and there's nothing you can do and until you don't realize that there is nothing that you can do but roll along with the punches then you're gonna have a very hard time going into the next step of life. 
Now the third step of accepting this diagnosis was really an iceberg for me because I felt that I could have gone to a deep depression and not come out of it. And I also felt like if I didn't have the support around me, I would have been in a deep depression right now. I also feel that because I had something to look forward to, for example, in my case, my children, my family, I was very motivated to keep my head above the water. And I was not about to let this diagnosis come and just let me drown in a cup of water. So I made it a routine to wake up and take a shower, do my hair, do my makeup. Even if I wasn't going anywhere, I would still make it a routine to put that music on in the morning that would pump me, like if I was going to the gym or you know, it just pump me up and make me more motivated to just do things. I would make it a point to look cute on a daily basis, even though I was just staying at home. Why? Because that's what made me feel better. I don't know what makes you feel better, but I definitely recommend that whatever makes you feel better, whether it's making your coffee in the morning, whether it's going to get your coffee in the morning, anything that makes you feel better, do it. Do it and make a habit out of it as long as you're not hurting yourself, please. But anything that made me feel better, I actually found um, on YouTube this pastor and he really motivated me a lot. And I would put him on in the mornings and I would just preach with him on my YouTube channel and I just, I loved it. I, my mornings were so inspired. My days would just go smoothly. My thinking that day was just positively, like just good straight across because I started off my mornings good. At this stage of stage three of accepting the diagnosis, like I said, I was still feeling like I can fall into a deep depression and I'm not gonna lie to you, there were days where I just cried in bed all day. I cried in bed asking why me? Like why did why wasn't me? Like what did I do? What am I paying for? At the end of the day, I'm not gonna say I'm a really religious person, but I do believe in a higher power. I'm not gonna question the higher power because we're here, we're born, and we are gonna leave this earth soon, not knowing when. We're not born with an expiration date that we know about, because if that was the case, we'd all be running around wilding out until that day. But we're here, and the fact that you're allowed to be here alive makes a big impact within itself. You're allowed to be here alive. Somebody out there is making sure that you're waking up every day, so why not make the most of every day? So in stage three of me accepting this diagnosis, I made it a point to live my life to the fullest every day. And that included with my kids and my husband and my family. Hey, you know what? We're gonna take this vacation. And yes, I'm gonna take the wheelchair. And yes, you're gonna carry me to the beach, which my husband's in. And yes, we're gonna do everything as a normal family. Just because I have a little setback doesn't mean that the rest of my family has to have a setback. During stage three of kind of me accepting this diagnosis, it was also accepting the fact that I should not be caring what others be thinking about me. And the reason I say that is because the first time I took a wheelchair, I was um, going on a vacation, couples vacation, uh, with my husband and we went to the Dominican Republic. And for the first time, I had to take a wheelchair in the airport and I was literally bawling my eyes out. I was in tears, crying in the wheelchair, like quietly because I didn't want nobody to see me. I was already, I felt like I was already attracting so much attention as this young girl in a wheelchair riding through the airport. But the fact that my husband was so supportive, I Lord knows, I don't give him enough credit. He is so supportive. He was like, you know what? I'll stay in the wheelchair with you. Like you don't owe anybody an explanation and he empowered me so much i love this man for helping me out so much and he just makes sure to let me know i don't owe anybody an explanation and it is so true i do not owe anybody an explanation as to what's going on with me and when we got to the dominican republic the airport attendee there who was helping me with the wheelchair was like what, what's wrong with you and I decided to have fun with him. At this point, I already had the, um, I was freshly done with the plasma exchange, which is the line through my neck, um, which you kind of can see the black dot. I was like, oh, I got shot in my neck and hit my spinal cord and that's what happened. Next. Like, 
like his face you could see it in his face he, sh he was like i shouldn't have asked that like his face was like petrified and i was like oh maybe you learned your lesson i'm not asking people what's wrong with them that experience itself in a wheelchair with my husband by my side and just crying the whole time i was in the wheelchair and him just pushing me through and empowering me really showed a lot of his character and his person towards me and really of how little i knew of how to empower myself period like you shouldn't need anybody to empower you but it is nice right when somebody pushes you and hey you can do it you can do it but at that point i realized whoa i need to put myself first in the sense that i need to put my emotions my self-esteem first in my heart and in my head my family and my kids and everybody was first and I want to make sure everybody's good. But now that I have this disease, I've come to realize that if I'm not happy and if I'm not content with what things are going on in my life, how is my kids and my family supposed to be happy with me? That trip really kind of opened my eyes as to how my real attitude should be towards this diagnosis. You got it. If you're not dying. Just learn to live with it. And if you don't have to explain yourself to everybody, you just say you got shot in your neck if you got a plasma exchange. So then I kept doing more trips because of business stuff. And I did another trip back in April of this year, 2019, with my son, my oldest son, for his spring vacation. And I went on my wheelchair without a problem, not really caring what anybody thinks, with my son walking right by my side. And the fact that he was walking so proudly next to me made me feel so warm inside. And in this trip, I got a lot of thinking done. And I thought to myself, you know what? From this point on in my life, whoever's not engaging with me in a positive way, I really don't have the energy to waste on people who just wanna not be there for me. I would hate being treated differently um, because I have a diagnosis but I understand that I am different and that's fine because I know I'm cute. Anyways, so this trip in April basically opened my eyes to so many things, including my spouse, including my kids and my family and my friends. I i don't want to say I've lost a lot of friends along the way, but I've lost a lot of friends along the way and I've made so many new friends that honestly, I can't believe that at this stage in the game, I'm making new friends that I consider my family now. What I really came back with in that trip was that I had to put myself first. That my happiness and my well-being had to be first. And a lot of the times we don't think like this in general because we want to make other people happy to make them like us. But you know what? I love myself. I love myself. And I feel like if I love myself the way I love myself, then there's no problem in accepting other people loving me the way I am. I'm not anything different yes i have a disability that might affect my walking that can affect some changes in my life but so many people and so many places that accommodate and are willing to help you because they understand that you're a person that you are just as important as the next person and for me it's been so hard getting to a place in my life where i'm saying i'm okay with this diagnosis i can live with this diagnosis and I'm okay explaining it to everybody. Like, people need to learn. And that's how we learn, by talking, by communicating, by reading. We learn through each other. And I feel like it's very important that I speak out during these video sessions with you guys, as you guys can see, and speak the truth. Speak the truth about what it is to have this autoimmune disease because I've learned so much along the way. My family has learned so much along the way. My husband has learned so much along the way that that's the only reason I feel like I'm sane today. So stage four of accepting this diagnosis has really made me open up to the point that I've decided to go on social media, make this YouTube channel, and just tell people my story. I know it is embarrassing in the beginning. It is freaking embarrassing in the beginning. So it hurts that you have to go through this and the questions of why me, I honestly feel that he or she who is up there will not put you through a battle that you cannot handle. And if you're like me, that you didn't know that your happiness had to come from within you at first, 
you have to take the time and do some soul searching in your body so you can be content with yourself because your life once you get diagnosed with an autoimmune disease like mine it's not gonna be easy but if you had an easy life there would be no difficult challenges for you to progress so just to recap real quick stage one was the initial shock stage as to why me stage two sort of why me but okay let's look into this stage and in between stage one and stage two of me accepting this diagnosis I was very embarrassed as well as to what was going on with me and the fact that I was peeing myself all the time and I was tripping and falling. That was very embarrassing and I did not want to talk to anybody about it, but I had to tell my closest people. And I want to say stage three and four really were the game changer for me because if I didn't have the support that I had and if I didn't have the attitude that I had. And if I didn't get up and do, you know, get all pretty in the morning and put that music to pump me up or put the pasta to raise me to the sky, I feel like I would have been in a very, very deep depression right now. And a lot of us do fall into a deep depression, but I do think it's possible to get out of it because I wasn't diagnosed with something that I'm going to die within 24 hours. We all have an expiration date. You might be driving in a car and you get into a car crash and then boom, you know? Your expiration date comes to an end. But I feel like we need to be very thankful. Just now that November's coming in, I feel like I have a lot to be thankful for. And I get emotional with this because The amount of love that surrounds me is incredible. Those are kind of the mini stages that I went through. I'm not a psychologist, but I did study a psychology course in college. Again, I'm not a medical person. I'm just honestly speaking from the heart that there are different stages that we go through when we get diagnosed from the initial state of shock to accepting what we have and learning how to live with it. So I feel like it's important that you guys recognize that and you identify where you are in your life so then you know how to move to the next step. And if you don't have that support system around you that you feel loved, that you feel like they can understand you, this is why there are so many amazing, amazing groups on Facebook, on Instagram, on just any social media platform that basically, it feels like a family that talk about the different diseases. And I'm, I belong to a couple of groups on Facebook, shout out to you guys, where I've had a question and I've had nobody to turn to but the Facebook group and I've had so many great answers and so many informational help because it might not be the correct and accurate because none of us really are neurologists in there because we're in the group because we all have the same diagnosis but at least we support each other and we help each other in the sense that it almost feels like a family in those groups and I'm very thankful for these groups very thankful well guys I want to thank you for taking the time to see my video this week and just know that if you're battling through something because you just got recently diagnosed with anything that is impacting your life in a way that you cannot handle, trust and believe in the process. Science has come such a long way that I'm so proud of the society and the era and the generation that I live in because I'm able to tell my story with you guys and also receive um, medication that is helping me be stable. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope that this month of November coming up, you guys start to really think about everything that is helping you and be thankful that you're still alive and that you're watching my video. Be thankful. It is the month of giving thanks and giving. And you know, sometimes we underappreciate those loved ones around us and they're giving us their world and we're here throwing it away because we just feel like shit. But be thankful be thankful be thankful because people do love you and people do care about you have a fab day my friends make sure to subscribe down there hit the red button follow me on facebook instagram and twitter fab nml have a great day guys